I've been asked to provide a little insight about how to handle hinges with the moment area method. So that's what we're going to take a look at. We've got a two-span beam where at one specific location we have a web-only connection. That means we're only significantly transferring shear and that means that we have in effect an internal hinge or pin in our system. All right, so that's what we mean by uh, beams with hinges here. So we've got a 25 foot span to the left, a 25 foot span to the right, but the one on the left is broken up with this little overhang and then the hinge and then we got the 20 foot span with this point load of 20 kips that's at the middle of this 20 foot uh, span. And there's our three supports. Now that looks like it might be unstable and technically it is but as long as we don't actually apply any sideways load then we're okay uh, to take a look at this system. Right? Now what we're asked to do is draw the deflected shape and develop a strategy to find the displacement at the hinge and the discontinuity in the slope or that is the discontinuity in the rotation at the hinge. So we're only going to do the uh, basic element of the strategizing and not so much the numerical application for this particular example. We will do some numbers particularly for the equilibrium to get you going. All right, so let's take a, a closer look here. We, let's make a couple of assumptions. Um, we haven't been given, for instance, what the EI is of the, the beam, so we'll assume that EI is constant. We'll also assume that we have linear elastic response or behavior, and we will also as uh, just state what we already have, that we have a hinge located, well, nobody gave us any uh, symbols for the location, so let's make them up ourselves. Let's call the supports A, B, and C, and let's call the location of the hinge D. So we have a hinge located at D because of the web-only connection, right? Um, I'm going to anticipate here that my shape of the in response to the loads might look something like the following, right? So we've got supports in the middle and then we also have this hinge located here. It would make sense to me that this, where the load is located that we're going to have some sort of sag going on. But where this hinge is located, that's going to also want to go down a little bit. And the thing about this is, is that that will go down but that's connected to something else that has stiffness. It's all, if it wasn't connected over here at this far right end, then this little piece would, would try to pop up and we'd actually not be stable if we didn't have that. So I think what's going to happen is something along the lines of a deflected shape to the right of the hinge, something of this kind of nature. Now the hinge itself pops the slope continuity and enables the rest of this then to curve in this kind of fashion, the smiley face fashion, but there won't be continuity between the slopes that happen from one side of the beam to the other. Now I don't know if I've gotten those relative values correct and it doesn't matter. This is a reasonably consistent uh, shape. The one thing I don't like is that I show some sort of a uh, popping off of the support, so I'm going to just make my support look bigger so that it looks like we don't have that, but that's a little flaw or area of improvement in this deflected shape. But I didn't, that little scribble didn't really help make it look any better, did it? Alright, but that gives us an overall kind of view of what this might look like. Alright, so now one thing to note that when you have hinges that that's usually just like in trusses in machines, a really good place to go and cut the beam because it'll simplify everything. So if we did that, then we've got then the 20 kip load here at 10 feet and 10 feet. We've got the reaction AY and we have the shear at to the left of the hinge, that's VD, and we then put that to the other side of the hinge, 
and then five foot over we find that we have then the reaction at B and then we have the reaction at C. Right, so there's our two free body diagrams to go with the situation. No, we cut the beam and we do not have the internal moment showing up because that is right at the hinge. And the moment is by definition then zero. And so given what we've got here in the symmetry, it's easy to see that AY is going to be equal to 10 kips acting up and VD should be acting 10 kips up, but we've got it shown the other way, so that becomes a minus. Right, and then we can some moments here. Not some moments about point C, and we'll take then counterclockwise is positive. Why? I have no idea, but we'll have this is showing acting up, so that's VD or a minus 10 times then 30 feet, and then plus BY times 25 feet. Oh, that's not either. That's minus, isn't it? is equal to zero. Now we got a lot of minuses flipping around here. I'm a little confused myself about what's going on here. We've got, I took counterclockwise is positive. That's going the opposite. So that should be a minus times then what turns out to be a minus 10 times 30 feet. Okay, that makes more sense. And now by is going to be equal to 300 over 25. And that should be equal then to 12 kips. Let's just check it real quick. Bam, 12 kips. And then we can some moments in the other direction, meaning about point B. And let's take then clockwise is positive. So that will be now minus 10 times 5, then plus 25 times CY equals 0, and therefore CY is going to be equal to two kips acting in the direction as shown. Right, so those there are those values. Now we're going to need the moment diagram here. So we might as well go ahead and get from an equilibrium standpoint the shear diagram. And so as we go along we'll pop up by 10 and then go flat over to where the point load is at, still at 10. We'll drop down by a net of 20 to minus 10. We'll come over then another 10 feet, hit the hinge, but that doesn't change anything. We keep going on over another 5 feet. Notice the shear went to minus 10, that's what we had shown here because we showed shear in the positive direction. And then BY pops us up by a net of 12, or pops us up by 12 to a net of positive 2. From the minus 10, we go over flat. Another 25 feet and come down and close off. And there's your, here's point D. That's B and that's C for the shear diagram. Okay. Now, let's get the moment diagram. And we hope that the key features of being zero where it's supposed to will work out. We're going to start off, of course, at zero. We got 10 kips times 10 feet. And so we'll increase linearly up to a positive 100. And then over to the Hinge at D, we have minus 10 times 10 feet, so we'll go down to zero, continue off the slope for another five foot. And so that's zero at D at the hinge, it's supposed to be, that's good. And then we got the minus 10 times five feet, that's minus 50. Kip foot there, right? Five feet there, that's two kips up. All right, so two kips and then two times 25 will be a positive 50 taking us to zero the way it should. Bam. There we've got our moment and our curvature for this situation. Right? So that tells us then if we just redraw that real quick, that moment diagram shape, 
that we had again 0 to 100, 100 to minus 50, passing through 0 at D, and then we had the minus 50 closing off. Nice simple little moment diagram. Right? So now let's look at then the deflected shape that we're going to end up with. There's our hinge real close to where the support is located and then we've got the two exterior supports. And now we want to come along and just get our curvatures in correct. And I like to show the curvature is a little bit exaggerated and because it's usually a little bit easier you don't want to get too big but there we go no displacement at the support there's our hinge and then we've got then the positive portion of the deflection concave up there and note here is one of the things we're requested that we would find. We want to know what the change in slope is right at that hinge. Right, so this gets a little kind of tricky about how the heck are we going to do this. Right, there's A, B, C, and D. All this just to get the deflected shape and now we need to go get a strategy which will do in the next part.